Hello and welcome. My name is Carl and today I'm going to show you how to make fire and Houdini from scratch. So without using any of the shelf tools and this will kind of give you a better understanding of what Houdini is um, doing behind the scenes when you use any of these shelf tools. So uh, without further ado, let's just uh, jump right into it. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a source for our fire. So let's just drop down a geo node. And inside of this geometry node, we're just going to create a simple sphere. Let's go ahead and change this to a polygon and scale this down a little bit. Next node that we're going to want to create is a pyro source node. Go ahead and connect these guys up. And inside of this pyro source node, where it, goes, where it says initialize, we're just going to want to click source fuel. The next node that we're going to drop down is a volume rasterize attributes node. And it's this one right here with the kind of weird, weird thing going on there. Um, connect these guys up and then in here in the attributes part, we're going to want to put down fuel and temperature. And those are going to sort of pass those values along from the pyro source node. And that's pretty much it. That's all we have to do to sort of set up our fuel source. We're just going to drop down a null node and rename this to something we'll recognize. I'm just going to write down out fuel. And there we go. Um, next, what we're going to have to do is set up our dynamic operator network. So let's we'll just drop down a DOP network. And inside of here, there's going to be, I guess, three main, um, or I guess four main um, nodes that we're going to want to um, enter in. So we'll just start with a gravity force, a pyro solver. a smoke object and finally a volume source. We can just go ahead and connect all of these so add gravity to the output, pyrosulfur to gravity, and then make sure that the smoke object is going into the first pin on the pyrosolver and then on the volume source, you want that on the last pin of the pyro solver. Here in the volume source node, we're going to, oh, sorry. We're gonna change this initial um, source from smoke to source fuel. Um, and also it's going to ask for a surface operator path. And this is what we're going to tie to our source fuel that we just created. And so if you go over here to this little right side part or this little thing on the right, you can go down to our object um, network and go and find the out fuel um, null node that we created. So just find that and then click accept. Then once we go over to our smoke object, you'll see that there's like this kind of box around here. If you go into your viewport and just press enter, you can sort of change this box and make it a little bit bigger because that's what's going to house our, our flames. Let's make it big enough. A potential fire won't have any problems. I'm going to maybe move it up a little bit. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, and so normally when you'd use your shelf tools, um, if we click play, we'll get some fire going. And I, let me just, uh, we can go back into here and just sort of remove the visibility on this, um, on our source field because we don't really need it anymore. And we'll just kind of have like this weird dusty plume of smoke. Um, 
and normally when you use your shelf tools this will all be kind of colored in and ready to go for you um, and that's because it already sort of used default values inside of this smoke object because this is where all of the data is being passed through we're getting our volume source and plugging it into our pyro solver and that's sort of doing all the math on simulating the the fire and then all of the data is actually being passed into the smoke object. The inside of a DOP network, it doesn't have the usual flow downwards that you would normally have on a surface operator network. So this smoke object is holding all of the data for our uh, for our fire. And so if we click this multi fuel multi field button, it'll sort of give us um, some better range. And there's like a lot of values in here like uh, temperature you can visualize, fuel you can visualize, um, and just a bunch of other stuff here. So if we go into the multi-field, we can adjust, um, we can adjust sort of the color of the fire in the viewport. So for density field, so we'll map this smoke density field to density, and then we'll go over to admission and then map the admission field to temperature. And nothing will really happen at the beginning, but if we go over here and adjust our emissions scale, let's just say to around like eight. Whoa, okay. Uh, maybe not eight, maybe around like seven. And then go down here to the admission color field and map that to heat. That'll start to give us something that looks more like a fire. And we can go into the, um, into the emission color ramp here and sort of adjust what the fire will actually look like. So let's say we wanted to add some red. That's probably a little too red. Let's go for like more like a reddish orange. Um, you can adjust that, but an important thing to note here is that this, these like color values and all of this, visualizing the temperature and the heat and stuff, this is only going to show you what's happening in the viewport. This is not what the fire will look like on render. That's an entirely different thing. So we've actually pretty much simulated our fire in this dynamic operator network. So we're going to go back here and we're going to sort of adjust how this is going to look when we actually render it out. So we are going to transition. And by transition, I mean flip, my, flip the page in my notes. <laughs> um, we're going to create another geometry node. And let's just call this something like uh, import. Go in here. We're going to create a dop import fields node. And so uh, we have some values up here. And we're just going to re reference um, the things that we just created. So in our DOP network, we're going to go in and just select DOPnet1. So that's the one that we made. And then for our node, that this is asking pretty much what's holding all of the, the data that we're going to retrieve. We're going to use um, our smoke object. And so there we go. It's got a, it's got our network. It's got our data, but we kind of need to tell Houdini what we're actually going to be rendering. And so if we go to presets, we're going to let them know that hey, this is a pyro object. Um, and so yeah, that'll uh, that'll pretty much do it and set it up for what we're going to do for our uh, our render. We're going to have to change some things about shaders, but here if you get rid of this dot net. It's going to give you this weird smoke sort of like at the beginning. And what we're going to need to do is go to our materials palette. Scroll down. Till we get to, yeah, here we go, flames. Drag it into this, this area right here. And once it kind of shows up, uh, we'll go back to our object viewport. Click on your import where we just set up that field Sorry, my microphone cut out. Um, so we're going to click on this um, thing that we just had of had our, uh, our import fields here. We're going to click on it. And then up here in this tab called Render, there's going to be a section for Material. And that's what we're going to go in and find the flames that we just added into our Material list. 
Um, and yeah, that'll uh, that'll pretty much do it for the setup of our fire. So it still doesn't look like this, but if we're going to render, and I'll teach you how to render real quick. So let's just kind of figure out an angle that we want um, for our fire. So let's just do it right here. Control click a camera and that'll place a camera where your viewport was. And then we'll adjust, move just a little bit and drop a light source in. Let's just use a spotlight, control click that as well. And we'll go back to our camera. And once we go, once we do that, we've got pretty much everything set up. We'll go to our render view and click render. And this might take a little bit, so I'm either going to cut this part out or we'll just sit here with some like elevator music or something. Um, but this will do. It's a, it's a little ma little magic and show us what the fire is going to look like. And there we go. We've uh, we've got our fire. Um, so this the, vi the visual of this fire is being driven by the material that we just assigned to our attributes. And so if we want to go back in and sort of adjust it to how we have it in the viewport, um, or when we had it in our regular network, this a little bit more like this. We can go over to here and go to our shop, or I guess it just goes straight to materials. And we'll have our flames, and if you just click on that, it has all of the adjustments and stuff that we made, or just sort of the same format. We can go back in, make it a little bit redder. reddish orange and that will translate over into our render view and there we go there you have it that's pretty much it um, so just remember that when you're adjusting the look of your fire make sure that you go into your materials but if you want to change the behavior of the fire you go back into your dopnet and adjust um, stuff from the pyro solver like the buoyancy lift which will to, which will um, determine like how high the fire will go, um, some other things in combustion, just a lot of um, sliders and stuff. And the website on Houdini will sort of give you a more in-depth um, explanation on what each of these do. Um, so yes, that has been it. I have been Carl, and uh, thanks for watching. I have spoken.